Guys, we're live. So sorry. I actually, uh, yeah, I'm really late. I'm sorry. I just fed Gert and I knew she had to poop and she was taking her time to uh, find a spot. But the sun's going to go down soon. And anyway, the coyotes will be out. So I had to make her do it. And I apologize. I really kind of hate being this late. Uh, I am. Frida, I apologize. I didn't realize I was this late. I thought it was like a minute late. Really, truly, I don't like that. I don't like it. It's a Scientology thing. We had to be on time or we went to ethics. Don't like it. Martha Slemmer. I love that you're back. I've missed you. I've thought about you. I wondered. I pondered. Um, hello, everybody. Brian Lucas, I love you. Guys, Marla Robinson. Thank you. John Van Geese. Good to see you, brother. Layla, it's been a minute. No, it has not. Layla's always with me. Abigail, Anna Banana, I'm on Reese time. What a sweet thing to say. West Coast Fancy Nancy, Trixie. Hey, Third Eye Open. Love you, girl. I'm so excited to meet you. Uh, these damn difficult weeks, Barb, I hear that. Uh, Sharice, good to see you. Mark Hardman, I love you, Mark. I really do, and you know it. Carrie Wilson, guys, I've really missed you. I feel like I haven't seen you for a while. Casey, Ashley Marie. See, I love live streaming with people, but this is our one-on-one -on -one time. This really means a lot to me. I love doing stuff with Tommy. I love doing stuff with Sterling. I love it. But the thing is, I can't, I don't have the direct connection talking to you guys. And it's just not, uh, you can't put a price on it. Ashley Marie, are you sure? <laughs> I have three boys. Four minutes is nothing. Yes, Mile High Hokey, it has been forever. I've missed you. Lisa Vining, I love Odetta. Cindy Edge, hey girl. Amy Edge, what the hell? Are you guys related? That's weird. Um, that's true, Brian Lucas. Boris Cruz, looking like a porcelain doll. Dang, Boris, I like that. Jenny, I like seeing what the chat is up to. If you're late, you're late. No biggie. Jenny, I love you. Cats Meow, Jamie Palmer, uh, Sarah Browett, I love you. Jenny gets chatty. ASAP Lizzie. Has it been a minute or is it just me? I feel like I haven't seen you for a minute. Nikki Knows, Joe Virus. Love Joe Virus. Debbie P, Kim is Blue, Tweeters Mom. Jen Aunt Nene Hobbs. Oh, I love Mary Osborne. Hi, Mary. Catherine B, Sharon Gregg. Yeah, John Van Geese. <laughs> totally, brother. Uh, hey, Kate Murphy. True to it. Liz R. Alicia. Ooh. Driving home from a funeral. Uh, wow, that's sad. And I'm so sorry, Alicia. We're here for you, girl. That makes me very sad. Armine. Oh, that was hilarious, Armine. I totally misspelled that. Uh, rain virus. Ooh, I love celestial seasonings tea. Wait, what? It's owned by a cult? Okay. I won't be purchasing any more on Amazon. Cat, Jessica West, Victoria Pierce. Oh my God. This is the person who, above anybody else, has made it very clear. Victoria only likes her relationship with me. She does not like other people on my channel. Victoria is very loud about it and we love her anyway, but she really, really only likes me with her and me and her. She does not like anybody else. It muddies the waters and she's just not a fan. Yawn, uh, Michelle, I have missed you as well. Sarah Robin, love you. Lurking and loving Reese. Victoria, we know that, girl. You've made that clear, girl. And that's okay, really. I love you for it. Casey, where has Sterling been? I talked to him today, actually. He's doing really well. Uh, he was on his way to work and he said, we'll do something soon. Dude works like around the clock, okay? I don't do that. Sharice, thank you. Paula Puffer. Um, I love that. Are you sure? That's so nice. Ashley Marie, you're late too. Laughs me. Ewa, I love Ewa. Hey, Carrie Ann, half is here. Matrix Rabbit, good to see you, Todd. Okay, you guys are not related, Amy Edge. All right. Anita Card. Thank you, Anita. I'm really liking this color. I'm really into it. Beth T. See, I have to remember too, on this channel, I am monetized, so... I got to be careful with the sailor mouth. On the other channel, I feel like I can say whatever because we haven't gone through. We have. We're waiting on like Google to get back. But we're not waiting on that here, are we? I have lost, by the way, like 200 subs now. So either people are starting to really hate me or YouTube's doing this thing. 
Can you guys just check your damn subscriptions? It's so frustrating. Not with you guys. I'm just mad at YouTube. Beth T, thank you. You like these glasses. Love you, pajama pixie. That sucks, rain virus. I didn't know that. Mimi's suppressive pups. Hey, babe. Todd, it's okay that I was late too, man. Uh, uh, nearly Marie's excited to catch a live solo. So is Victoria Pierce. I don't know if you knew. Kemi Steele, Miradira. Reese, the shirt, the lips, the glasses are on point tonight. It is Friday, girl, and you know what that means. Mm -hmm. Rachel Harmon, I love you. Shannon C. I get that, Shannon C. I know what you mean. I love you, Kim Greenleaf. Annette Faber. It's a long day. It's a full day of Reese. I hope you're okay with it. Ooh, Kat, you got the Moroccan oil dry shampoo on your recommendation. Love it. Kat, Kat, this is day three. Doesn't look greasy, does it? No, it does not. And Kat, they have for dark tones and light tones. Of course, I get the light tones and it actually kind of lightens your hair a little bit too. I know you'd love it. I don't steer you wrong when it comes to that. Relationship advice, real world stuff, knowing whether uh, Philadelphia is a state or a city, um, geographical stuff. Don't trust anything that comes out of my mouth. Dry shampoo, toner, lip, frilly shirt. I can help. And Jilbo, you had a crazy nap. That is crazy. Prayer requests now. Good to see you, fall leaves. Always a lurker. First time commenting. Subscriber from the beginning. Love you and your channel. That is so nice. That's so weird to me. Subscriber from the beginning, but your first time chatting. It feels like it's been years. That's so kind. I love that. Shelly, I love you. Kathy loves horses. It has been a minute. Lisa from Jersey. Love you, girl. I'm still so glad that you're better. Ev Barney. Jen Nelson. Hey, ditto, Deb. Yeah, ASAP Lizzie. It's been a minute, girl. Cassie Mosier. Yeah, you haven't been around either. I'm glad you made it. Shauna B. Susan Ward. Karen Pooley. I love that. Buddy's dad, Conroe, is back. I like that, too. Hey, Rona. Kim. Thank you. This is number 91, if I didn't already say it. Shelly, you're so funny. Hey, Pat Jonas, Margie Barr, Tony's Hooter, Figsy's back, Robert Roy. Hello from Montreal. Brianna Miller, I feel like I haven't seen you for a minute either. You were in earlier, but I still feel like I haven't seen you for a minute. I feel like I have to sneeze. Hold on. Allergy season, pardon me. SA, what is that color? It is number 91, my friend. Sephora cream lip stain. Santa, Shannon, thank you. You like these glasses. Britt, I haven't seen it yet, girl. DS Kitty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number 91. It's a good color. This is a good spring summer. It's a good one. Kiwi and two cats. You made another live. I love that. Jessica West. Jessica, I love a ruffle shoulder. I don't care if it's outdated. Um, I The girlier, the better. Girl me up. So puff sleeve, ruffle sleeve. I'm never going to not wear it. So don't ask me not to, please. Uh, I think it's YouTube has gone crazy. Yeah. I would say my favorite color is emerald green, Todd. Cat says UBU. We're not going to make that kind of noise, Bo. Hey, Sean P. Bo, don't make me yell at you in front of Brian Lucas, please. Oh my God, Shelly, you're funny. Thank you guys for checking to make sure you're subscribed. Hey, Suzanne. Monica M. Jamie Palmer. Yeah, all that stuff should be on Lady Co. VTV. Okay, that's okay. But thank you, VTV. That's so nice of you to say. Jimena, I love you, girl. Teddy Bear Scott. Holy crap. I haven't seen you in a long time. Wow. I mean, a long time. I forgot you existed. I'm so glad you're here. Kind of sad, the people of the past. Hey, Bo. Yeah, please take that and uh, pipe down. Blow drill, I love Dylan. Looking fab on this spring Friday, Reese. Saying hola. I love you, Dylan. Thank you for coming in. You're always so supportive, Dylan. You're the best, man. Okay, rain virus. Am I super behind? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I 
love that, Todd. When I come here catching it with an old friend, Sharon Spaghetti, Shelly loves roll call, Chrissy never in Newton. Hey, girl, look at that. I got a super chat. Found some money cleaning out my old nightstand and wanted to share. Hope you have a fantastic. Golly, you guys are so nice. I'm serious. That is such, that, that means so much to me. That's really kind. Thank you, Aunt Nene Hobbs. Uh, can you wash your, oh, bash your washing machine. I thought you meant to say wash your washing machine. I do. I get little, those little cleaning things, but I do that with my dishwasher too. Uh, you had to resubscribe today, P. Taylor. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't get it. it. This I've had more people unsubscribe. Baby Angel, love you, girl. Uh, Sephora has it, DS Kitty. Michelle Asbel, yes, I feel like it's been a second. Love you, girl. Hey, Sam. You broke your glasses yesterday, Todd? That sucks. That's fantastic, Joe Virus. Out breakfast with a friend I've had since fifth grade. We have been close friends ever since. Today was great. I love that for you, Joe. I love that journey. I love you, Annette. I stay up for you and lose a lot of sleep here, but be, but from the beginning was addicted pretty fast. Never miss you. I love you. That is such a nice thing to say. What does that mean? Reese has some drip tonight. What the hell does that mean? Do I need to get Huxley down here to translate? Wine a little bit more. Thank you. It was, guys, I really, really feel uplifted by our talks lately. Uh, oh my God, Diana H is in her new apartment. Thank you for your support. Guys, it has been a long time coming. Diana, I am very proud of you, girl. And I love you. That is such a huge accomplishment. Good for you. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Sharice, how is Hux? Uh, Tony Suter, it's in my car. Picked up, but I haven't opened it. Um, how is Hux? I think he's good. He is actually really excited about his baseball practice he had today. Oh, Todd, you're going to bed. All right. We love you, man. Hey, Powerpuff. Um, SPTV watcher. Good evening. Oh, Susanna. I'm glad you made it. Um, he is really excited about baseball. Oh my gosh. I love the earrings. Can you see them? They're little, uh, turquoise deals. They got little tiny turquoise pieces all around them. You know, I love turquoise cat. I want you to feel special. No cap. Your drip is busting on God. All right, Joe. Now you're just being a showboat. And now you're just being a dusty ass son. I love Bo beats. Whenever I need a boost of good energy, I come straight back to you. My reason Bo beats you're an angel. I love you. And I love, love, love seeing you. Leslie Watson. You look beautiful. Love the hair frames and top. So cute. Thank you. You know, Tommy said this looked very, um, Hey, Heather Carr, Ruben, welcome. What did he call it? Oh, Alice, very Alice in Wonderland. I didn't know that reference. Cause I haven't seen the movie, but I have seen some stuff out of the book from being in Scientology, but I still don't, uh, I don't know a lot, but apparently that was his, uh, his take on it all. Are you sure you are always a breath of fresh air? Thank you. Michelle, I had to get a new pair of glasses. I got the tortoise frame. I love them. Thanks for the inspiration. Yeah, girl, tortoise is beautiful on women. I mean, I love it on men too. I shouldn't say women. It's both. But tortoise is very flattering on uh, on everybody, I feel. Um, I like Yogi T. Yeah, Paula Puffer. So what was I? Uh, oh, yeah, Miradira. Holly, Holly hobby. Okay. Okay. Oh, really, Brian? That's cool. I didn't know that about you. Jamie, I think it was a printed top you wore two days ago. Uh, two days. You said you'd mentioned to your boss to order. Uh, yes, I did. And she's ordering it. And guess what? It came in another colorway. It came in a green colorway. That one's coming in first. The one I ordered is on back order for like the next two weeks or something. She got both. And I, J Jamie, I'm really excited about it. Um, but yeah, don't worry. She's ordering it. We talked about it. Heather Carr, that was nice. Somebody gifted you a membership. Okay, Rain, we're glad you're back. Um, Ruben, I am from Omaha. <laughs> So 
I love guys, ever since I sneezed, I feel like I need to blow my nose and you know how weird I get about that, uh, making noise. So hold on, I'm gonna mute it. Okay, that feels better. Yeah, wine a little bit more. I kind of saw that. I'm addicted to the Sephora lip stain because of you. Oh my God, Britt, of course you are. I love the lip shade. I have the same one, 91. My, my little little niece saw me in it, left her speeches. Brittany, it's such a good color. It's a beautiful, bold color. And I think it would look good on everybody. Sandy Kovacs, yes. Reese, what is the largest size Lady Co order will, uh, wait, what is the largest size Lady Co will order or get in? 3X, Auntie Wombat. She goes up to 3X which is such a beautiful thing. I love that she does that extra small to three X. Um, I never saw it, Brian. So loving, uh, loving our chats this week with Tommy. I find them very meaningful. I find them almost like going to therapy. And I think a lot of you do too, because I've talked with a lot of you privately and I've read your comments about it. I hope this catches on. Hey, peace lady. That's all right that you're late. I hope this catches on. I know not all of you are a fan, by the way. I'm not promoting this and I'm not going to go on about it because we're on my channel. Hey, Chow Yun Smut. Love you, Cricket. Uh, Rachel. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. Hey, Cheshire Cat. Um, I'm not going to go on and on because we're on my channel and not everybody loves chatting about Tommy or chatting with Tommy. Hef. Um, thank you, Big Z. But it, I, I, there's no denying the fact that it's good stuff. It's, it's, it's really good going deep, uh, thick. I, I love getting into deep, deep conversations with people about stuff like we've been talking about and it goes into the weeds and it goes where it goes and you guys help guide us. And I just, I'm really loving it. And I want to tell you guys, thank you. And, and it's amazing how powerful talking conversations, just communication that is really good, what it does for you. It's really amazing to me. It's just, um, okay, Abigail, that's okay. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's life-changing. It's life-changing in a lot of ways. Sandra, yes. And like I say, uh, me too, true to it. And, and, do you guys agree it's better on that channel than it was here or on the boat? It's like we're both different, more more ourselves uh, people. Lacey, good evening, girl. Patty, I love you. Is it just me? I feel like I have a hair on me. Is it just me or do you guys see that too? I feel like we really get to get into the thick of stuff and feel like ourselves and at, at ease and a little bit safer there. It's a safe space. Now here, I'm totally myself one-on-one -on -one with you guys. No question. I never feel better than when I do this here with you guys. I'm serious. This is life for me. It, it breathes life into me being here with you guys. No effing question. Hands down. It's my favorite thing. That's okay, Brian. Hey, Zelda. Absolutely, Layla. Rhonda McNeil, I love you. But over there, I get to experience what I experience here. It's just on, having that conversation with him, seeing him so at ease. Do you guys see Lori? Yes. Tommy is so relaxed. He is so different over there in such a good way. Yes. Rachel, I definitely see an openness from Tommy to be himself. And I love it. I'll even say, I'll even go so far as to say, people who didn't like Tommy and I together are coming over there and watching it and saying, I kind of like you guys together over there. It, it's a different vibe and I can't quite put my finger on it. You're both not so guarded on the related boat. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the people not liking Tommy. I love that guy. I don't get it either, but you know what? What do they say? Like you could be the juiciest, ripest peach and there's still going to be somebody that hates peaches. I mean, put it into the gap, you know? Um, I love that, Jamie. I know you've come out of your shell more because of everyone I watch on here. Thank you, Paula. Glasses and necklace together just pop. It's very healthy for Tommy. 
you don't have to think, you know, it is. Um, hey, Elizabeth Frazier, glad you're here. He gives men a better vibe. I love that, true to it. He would love to hear that too. Thank you for being here. First time commenting, love you. Good for you. I love that. The relationship Tourette's kills me, Rain. I, I do want that as a ringtone. West Coast Fancy Nancy, thank you guys. Yeah. It's uh <laughs> nearly Marie, I understand. Thank you, Zelda. Thank you very much. Yeah, put it into the damn gap. Um, you guys aren't worried about what the chat says over there because we are all there for both of you, not to judge. It's the ultimate safe space. It is. Yeah, Kate Murphy for sure. I agree, Lacey Silver. How can you not love Tommy? I agree with that, third eye open. Yes, Paula Penley. You are both unguarded, totally. Tommy is the older brother I never wanted. <laughs> oh, I know. When Tommy said you were his best friend, it was the most genuinely sweet thing I've seen in a while. He did. He just let that out again today. And, you know, he is saying things. Um, yeah, I think Tommy uh, improves your well-being. He's just as lovely behind the scenes as well. Yes, he really has uh, done a lot of work to help me, guys. He has really, I don't, you know, you all, you guys say, like, I can't believe your growth, Reese, and you're doing so well. Connections and relationships have everything to do with that. It's not just the work I'm doing. Hey, Jeanette Rexford, he has helped with that so much. I mean, they all have, guys. Let's start at the beginning. Aaron is the one who who got me to where I am, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, yeah, Rachel, totally. Well, good, Frida. I'm glad to hear that. I'm just saying, guys, he's truly not just a good man, but an incredible friend. Y that's so kind, Shelly. And you improve his well-being too, Reese. Yeah, I I just think he and I have gotten even closer. It's just gotten more and more, um, just gotten better and better. Just when I didn't think it could get better, it gets better. I love Spanx too, Patty Collins. Nice, Lisa. I like that. You don't give up on each other and that is everything. Um, uh, used to be the be so much about the flirt and more deep conversation. You've developed your foundation together and the heartfelt deep combos are always lovely. I agree with that too. The flirt has kind of calmed down and it's been replaced by something way more real, more deep, meaningful, all those things. Sarah, you always, you always hit that. Me too, Hef. Me too, Jan. Yeah. I agree with that too. He's such a big part of your life. So it's hard for you not to talk about him. People need to understand that, Rachel. Absolutely. I love that. Are you sure? Yeah. Me too, Lumen. I think that's great. I love that, Joanne. Thank you. Shelly, I was shocked as you are were about that. Has my mom ever talked to Tommy? What does she think of him? My mom hasn't talked to him, but she loves him. And that's saying a lot. My mom does not love everybody. She's kind of judgy. Um, not in a bad way. She's just guarded. She's guarded like that of her children. Um, so uh, my mom really likes him. And she's noticed that he's really helped me and made a good impact in my life for sure. Mittens. I found both of you through Aaron. I'll be forever grateful. Stacy Sullivan here. Okay, I know who Stacy Sullivan is. Wow. You know, most of you found me through Aaron, and I'm forever grateful for him to to him for that too. Yes. I you know, you guys just pointing that out. I never I didn't see that till you just pointed it out tonight. The flirt has seemed to turn to real trust and friendship. I agree. Yeah, it's deeper now. A Betsy Sue. I haven't seen you forever. Uh, we call it work because Tommy uh, gives so much of himself, but it's true to who he is. It's his character to be genuine. You totally. And I also love what he said. I thanked him yesterday and it almost, I was thinking, reflecting on it. And it was so, he's so deeply real. He's so genuine guys. And I, what did I say? I thanked him because I said, you've helped me so much in my path to healing. 
And he almost, it was something along the lines of like, I've gotten more out of it than you have. Like the honor is mine. And I just thought, oh, he's such a good person. Yeah, Tony Tudor, absolutely. You are open with everything in your life. Since Tommy is a big part of that, people need to expect to hear you talk about him. And, and you know, I'm not going to sit here and talk the whole time about him, but yes, and I'm going to. And for those that uh, I think, I think those people have left anyway, who didn't support me and him or, you know, were on the fence about me anyway. Um, yeah. Are you sure? Absolutely. Gypsy Daisy. That's awesome. So anyway, I, the reason I'm bringing all that up is uh, Kiki. I love that. Found you through Aaron. The reason I bring all that up is it's just guys, relationships are important and it's not just my relationship with Tommy. It's my relationship with Sterling, my relationship with Aaron, Kim Wiseman. I'm glad you're here. Um, and, and I say, Aaron, I don't talk to Aaron as much anymore. The guy has got just, you know, he's got the foundation and he's really busy, but I do always hold a place in my heart for Aaron and how thankful I am that he, what he did, he did what he did. And he brought me to Tommy and he brought me to Sterling and he's done so many good things in my life for that reason. Hey, SB. Um, and I'm really grateful for that. Oh, Susanna, has anyone else noticed a positive change in you? Hux, Jeff, people at work. Um, yes. Yeah. All of the above for sure. For sure. Thank you. True to it. Um, so I just, you know, the connections, uh, I am part of the foundation. Yes, I am on the foundation. I'm on the board, Betsy Sue. I know to think that you and Tommy could have walked away from each other is crazy to think considering how close you are. So glad things worked out the way they were supposed to. I knew it would third eye open for sure. We almost lost each other for a minute there. And that would have been, a, that would have been a huge loss. Vanessa Winbury. Hi Reese. Finally tuning in moving next week and Holy crap, stress level 11 moving sucks. And I'm sorry, girl. Sassy Gigi. Hey, babe. I agree with that there. I've gotten a lot of that feedback too, Kiki. I didn't watch a lot of Tommy on his channel, but I do like you two together on the related boat. Um, it's a different vibe for sure. It's totally a different channel than the lifeboat. Not so different than relatable Reese channel because we go all over and we talk about everything, but for Tommy, it's a big shift. And I just think this is the best thing that could have happened to him for his mental state lately. He really needed this. And it makes me very happy to see my friends doing well and thriving. Um, that's all. I, I, I just, connections and relationships are important. And whatever is going on with anybody, people having a bad week, um, people in uh, just all, all around our realm, I hope the best for. And uh, I love that DS Kitty. Good for you. And I, I really do support everybody. And I just want to, I want to keep that going. I want, I'm making good progress in my mental state. And I just hope that everybody is, is working toward bettering themselves. I know that sounds general, but I mean that. Um, thank you, Shannon. See, I love that girl. Don't you have another recording to play with Aaron? I don't think I do, Rachel, but I'll have to go back and look. It's been a while since I've checked. Um, oatmeal is high. I'm pretty sure on the glycemic index piece, lady. What am I hearing? That was weird. I was hearing something and now I don't hear it. I don't know what it was. Um, oh, that's so sweet, Shelly. When I had to put a cat down a couple years ago now, I got a really nice card from our vet. That's such a nice touch. It's a nice touch. Um, Kate D, it's okay. I'm glad you made it, girl. I love what Sarah has to say. Oh, Rhonda McNeil, that's such a nice thing to say. Reese's healing is contagious. Thank you, Rhonda. Tommy always loved deep conversation and his brain has such curiosity for others. On the lifeboat, he had that, but focused on helping others. Relate, relate about he simply is free to chat, no pressure to help others, just be. God, that's great. And it's so true. That sucks, Kim Greenleaf. That is frustrating. Cassie Mosier, I should reach out to Aaron about that. That's, that's a good point. 
I would love to see another episode of you and Aaron reading Scientology moms on Facebook posts. He is so hilarious. It's so fun to do that. Moni 69. Good to see you. Um, to see you grow has been amazing to start off in Jeff's office and your own space. Now I remember how scared you were and to see you grow is amazing. I love you, girl. Thank you for saying that. That is such a nice thing to say. Hey, Debbie Lima. I love you too. Yeah. Those three men have each taught you that men can be good and kind, that you deserve to be treated like they treat you to be treasured. That is huge. Yes. I love, um, Sarah, I still have it. I haven't thought about it in a while. Christine, I'm glad you're here. I love you too. Um, I, oh, I know what I was going to say. You said those three men. It made me think, you know, I appreciate my relationship so much with Sterling too. I talked to him at length today and I just got off the phone with him. Just he, that's how, you know, you have a true friend, by the way. That's, that's how I know. Cause I'm, I'm still, I know I want another game night too. I'm still learning and having real friendships, unconditional ones, which I've never had. And I get off the phone with Sterling every time. My sister, Curious George, I'm glad you made it. And I just think I'm so, it's such a gift to have Sterling in my life. He is so balanced in how he looks at things, how he talks. He's just very analytical. And I love that about Sterling. Um, Lori Lee, I'm so glad, girl. Yeah, Rachel. I, 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 hey, love yourself. I love, love, love Sterling. He is a, a very special person to me. He's impressive as hell. And like I said, hey, Shay, every time I get off the phone, but including today, I got off the phone. I know witness, but I just appreciate him. I really appreciate him. He's so level-headed and he helps me so much with stuff. Like, like if I have a problem, Oh, Vanessa, is it agate? I think so. Yeah, I think it's an it's like a slab of something. Um, they are each so different. Stur What's the matter? What was that noise? Are you all right? What's wrong? Linda's upset because she had to have her spring bath today. Um, what does Sterling do for work? He likes to keep that private Ewa. He doesn't, he doesn't talk about it. And honestly, he doesn't tell me about it because he doesn't, he wants to keep that private. Um, but Sterling is really so solid. He's a class act for sure. His heart is huge and truly cares. Yeah. He's just so balanced though. He does have great perspective. Um, but I mean, I just got off the phone with him and yeah, she's mad about her bath. Chauncey, I got off the phone with him and I just, that's the test of a true friend. I got off the phone and I was like, God, he just lifts you up. He makes me feel so much better. Um, yeah, she smells good too, Rain. Pretty upset about it though. Are you feeling pretty upset about things? Are you really upset about the, oh, okay. Yeah, no, I get it for sure. Yeah, we didn't. We really didn't enjoy that bath at all. Even though our hair is much cleaner and silkier, we, we wish that it was dirty and gross still, don't we? Really upset. She is, Paula, and she's very upset about things. Um, Jeannie, I miss Sterling too. I really do miss Sterling. I miss Sterling on Sundays. Um, that's cute, Irene. Kuala Lu, um, yeah, that is a nice thing to say. I'm sorry you are struggling with your painful memories right now. So glad you have Tommy and Sterling to lean on. Yes. <sighs> Shelly, it's too much. Uh, we're just really feeling uh, really upset with the whole world and community because we had to get a bath and uh, we're really pissed that we smell so good. It wasn't worth it at all, she says. It was horrific. It was 10 minutes of absolute terror. I had to sit there in the sink and just get rained on. It was awful. Cosmic Christy. Hey, girl. Um, Jamie. Yeah, Katie did. Uh, been talking with the guy I mentioned, having real conversations. Things seem to be less toxic now. I'm happy about that. Despite the toxicity in the beginning, he's a great guy. Love that, Jamie. <laughs> Shelly. Uh, I know. Oh, Paula, good luck. We're really, we could not be more upset and frustrated with life right now. And she said, somebody get God on the phone. Somebody call the Lord. This is not how the plan was supposed to be. And he had a plan for me. Somebody get God on the phone right now. 
Somebody call up Little Christ. I know, witness. Uh, no, she does not get the zoomies after a bath. She cl she climbed up on my bed. She started shaking, and I got my heating pad and laid it on top of her. Uh, Lisa, love, thank you, girl. Blakey, that's okay. I'm just happy to see you. I hope you had a nice dinner with your parents. I love that. Um, thank you, Sandra. Yeah. Get JC on the horn. That's right. Why does she need to call the Lord? She's practically the Lord herself. Well, that's what she said. She said, I'm going to call up the Lord and JC, and we're going to have words because this was not part of the plan. This was not in the Bible to bathe me. I really don't. I prefer to be stinky. I would much rather be smelly. It was not part of the plan. Okay. We know. You're very upset. Um, she's pretty upset, Paula. Yeah. Hey, Alicia. Yeah, I'm sorry, Alicia. That was sad. Alicia had a funeral today. Anti Wombat, they are the best company. Yeah. Uh, Gert doesn't do bats. Um, she's pretty upset. Yeah, Kualu, she's pretty upset. She is a little churro of a dog. All right, then. Are you good? Uh, I know. I know. We're really, really pissed about things. Hey, Lori Driscoll. So, guys, I just want to say, I wanted to tell you thank you for supporting the other channel. Um, I wanted to say, uh, oh, is he in here? Dang. Sneaky. Love you. Love you, Tommy. We were just talking all about you, by the way. Everybody had the nicest things to say about you. Oh, yeah. Layla, I actually forgot it was there. Thank you for asking, but everything's fine now. We know. All right. Um, oh, her feet are from Whoville. She's definitely straight out of a Dr. Seuss film. These are called footy paws. Um, that's how the Lord put it in the Bible. And uh, we refer to those as footy paws, sometimes leggy foots. Um, but yeah, she's uh, definitely straight up out of a Dr. Seuss book. Yeah, Tommy said, hi, Debbie. Debbie, I saw that and we love him. Um, but thank you guys for supporting that channel. And I just want to say it's really changed a lot of my attitude. This week in particular has been a hard week for me. I told most of you guys tomorrow uh, is the day. Tomorrow is five years since my husband Fred died. And uh, it's a weird one because tomorrow it, he died on a Saturday five years ago. And it's a Saturday. I don't know. For some reason, every year on his death date, when it's a Tuesday or a Thursday, hockey town. Ooh, damn, Reese. You like my lips tonight. I'm, everybody loves this color, hockey town. John, I appreciate you noticing. Uh, Shelly Kelly, love you, girl. Uh, yeah, P. Taylor, she was born right next to Little Christ. Um, so when it's on like a Tuesday or a Thursday, for some reason, it's just... Uh, well, that's good, Brian. I'm glad she's doing good. Uh, it's different this year. It's different because I'm going through the motions of everything. So on Friday night, five years ago at this time, hospice was there doing their um, assessment. And I just rem I just hear everything. I remember everything. And uh, it makes me want to play. Actually, I have the video uh, Angie Mo, love you too. Guys, thank you for being supportive. It's tough. I'm, ha I'm, I'm, um, yeah. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'm trying to, yeah, Kualu, it's just harder when it matches the exact time. And so I'm just reliving everything. I, I just remember, I remember where I was standing. I remember what I was saying. Um, you know, just going through the motions, not sleeping, uh, not showering. And my dog had just died. And so it's just weird. I, I remember Saturday morning, this time five years ago, the vet called and said, your dog's ashes are ready to be picked up. Keila, thank you so much for that. That really helps. Thank you. Ashley Marie, I appreciate that. Hey, Ty's channel. I can't say I saw the title of your live. Had to drop in and wrap you in love. I'll catch the rest on replay. Loving you extra hard today, my friend. Ty's channel, I love you. You know, I always will, girl. Thank you for that. Um, Thank you, PJ Mac. I... Layla, I'm sorry I have to relive the trauma every year too, but it is part of life and um, it's hard, but I have you guys. I still have Fred, you know, he's a huge part of me and 
I, it helps to talk about him. It talks to helps to talk to him. I feel like that's too high. Sorry. Thank you, Jamie Palmer. And it's so weird because uh, it's like it was yesterday. I remember I'm reliving everything as if it was. Uh... Reese, I have a question. If it's too difficult, don't answer. Have you talked to Huxley yet about you making a change? Yes. Mm -hmm. And he's totally on board with that. Uh, yes, lives mom Carol. Aaron closed the portal of hell you were living in and you walked through to a new portal of living your life with true friendships and honest, beautiful relationships. We all love you, Reese. I love you, Carol. Thank you for saying that. You're right. Um, thank you, Lacey Silver. Guys, it's okay. I'm not, uh, I'm not in a terrible place because of you guys. You lift me up. I'm okay. But, um, yeah, Amy, thank you. It's, there's something about, uh, it just all came crashing in at once with my, my dog dying. And, uh, thank you, Mira Dira. And, and it just all happened at once. And it's hard to believe that tomorrow, five years ago was my last day with him. And, and I just didn't expect that to happen. I didn't see it coming. I truly working in senior living, you guys know the story, but he, I said, they're recommending hospice and I'll never forget him looking at me and he went hospice. That's the final chapter. I mean, he was shocked. And I was too. And I just thought we've got weeks and weeks, if not at all. You know, I've seen people go on hospice and they get better and rally and then they're taken off of hospice. I did not expect that was yesterday. That was five years ago yesterday on my mother's birthday that I told him that. It was Thursday afternoon. I got home from work and I said, they're recommending hospice. And he said, that's the final chapter. And I said, yeah, um, Liz R. Yes, I have at length. And, uh, he said, then, uh, he said, let's call up mom. He called my mom, mom, which was hilarious. It was his mother-in-law, but Fred was 95. My mom was 67. Um, Hey, SM, good to see you. And uh, he said, I want to say goodbye. And I said, this is the most dramatic thing I've ever heard in my life. I, I, there's only room in this marriage for one of us to be the drama queen. And it's definitely going to be me. What are you doing? And so he called my mom and uh, Shelly, you're hundred percent right. He called my mom and sang her happy birthday so loud, like belted it. And she was like, whoa, love you, Fred. And he said his goodbyes to her. And he said, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be going now. He said, but I'll see you on the other side. And he said that to my stepdad too. And they didn't understand they did cause no one knew Fred was dying until minutes hospice called and said, he needs to be on hospice. You know, Fred didn't know Fred was dying. So it was just ridiculous for Fred to be like, well, I want to say goodbye. I was like, this is the most dramatic shit. I mean, come on. And, uh, yeah, my stepdad didn't understand what was going on. And he said, well, Fred, uh, keep playing piano, man. And Fred said, well, I can't play anymore. But he said, Reese has a lot of videos she can show you. And that was so, if you knew Fred, that was shocking because Fred never gave up on anything. And if you told, I, I always tell this, this real quick, it's morbid, okay? But it was between us and Fred made me laugh and I made him laugh. And so it was a kind of a sick, dark joke between the two of us, okay? Because he was old. But whenever Fred would um, cough or sneeze, you know, we had a huge age gap, right? I'd turn to him and I'd go, are you dying? And he'd go, hell no. He had the most like growly, gravelly voice. And we'd laugh. And, uh, you know, Fred protested death. He never gave up. So for Fred to say, for him to say, keep playing that piano, man, Fred was like, I can't play anymore. And I knew something was really wrong when he said that because Fred never gave up and he was my rock. I relied on Fred. I leaned on Fred for strength. And when he did that, I was like, oh my God, did he just, did he just show weakness? He's never done that. So um, yeah, Brittany, thank you. So that was last night, five years ago. And then today I called hospice 
and uh, they came and they were really awful. And she wouldn't, she said he wasn't qualified. And I worked in senior living. So I got a hospice person out there and the lady came and she did her assessment and Fred was screaming in pain. And uh, she came out of the room that he was in. I couldn't stay in there. I couldn't listen to him screaming when she did her assessment. So I stayed in the living room and she came out and she goes, she didn't know our connection, who I was. And she goes, they told me this guy was dying tonight. She was super awful. And that is so unusual for hospice guys. That's highly unusual. Hospice have to have the most kind, caring hearts. And they usually do. And uh, anyway, I'm not trying to make this sad. I'm just kind of going through the motions. I'm talking it out because it's going through my head and I hope you don't mind. But um, I just looked at this, this nurse and I said, that's my husband. And she said, oh, and I was just really crying and sobbing. And I said, please don't talk about him like that. I said, he is an amazing man. Uh, Lori Lee, I met him through my job. And uh, she left. She wouldn't put him on hospice. She didn't qualify him. He was 95 years old with congestive heart failure, but he didn't qualify. And uh, anyway, it got way worse through the night. And uh, that... As a matter of fact, yes, Kim, that's wild. I just thought of something. This time, five years ago, that was this time. Thank you, Sarah. That was five years ago, right now. Fred said his last words. We were sitting on the couch talking. And, uh, oh, that's wild. I looked over at him and I said, you know, this is dramatic. It's insane. You know, we're going to get through this. You're not going to be, you know, it's not the final thing. And he said, um, he had some, something happened to him. I don't know what, I don't know if he had a stroke, but, um, he, he looked at me and he said it was the most magic words, you guys. And, and this is why, um, oh, we just started dating Cassie because he, 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 I'll just tell you real quick. When Fred first saw me, he came through the doors of a place and he walked past and he looked at me and he went, I mean, he just laid eyes on me and that was it. And he came over and he grabbed my hand and did not let go of it. He said, and who are you? And I was like, <laughs> I mean, he just took control. That dude just just showered, blanketed me with emotion. It was crazy. Uh, there was just no going back. I, I was fell for the, under that spell immediately. But hey, Marsha, uh, he uh, we're sitting on the couch, and he he looked at me, and he, this was the last things he ever said, guys. He looked at me and he said, "Nobody will ever love you as much as I do." And I thought it was so sweet. And again, I didn't realize he was never going to speak again. And I was just holding his hand. Hey, Leslie girl. And um, uh, we did everything together, Cassie. We were inseparable. We did everything together. Thanks, Lisa. And then he looked past me. So he said, nobody will ever love you as much as I do. And I just listened. And then he looked past me. He was not a Scientologist. He was a Baptist. And he, we were facing each other, but he kind of looked right here. He went right past me. And something seems to have, that's when he never spoke again. So something happened. I think Fred just chose not to speak again because he was totally alert and able to yes and no at, from then on. He just didn't speak. So he was, he was very alert and clear. But he looked past me and he said, tell Reese that she was the love of my life. And that was it. He never talked again. And the next morning he woke up and hospice came, put him on hospice. I had a friend come help me with that. Hey, Jen, it is crazy, Brianna. And uh, I was laying with him the next morning and we were holding hands. We always slept with our hands. We held hands. And I woke up and we were just staring at each other. And I didn't know Fred wasn't going to speak again. And uh, I said, hi. And we were just looking at each other, but he wouldn't talk. 
we were just smiling and looking and kind of googly eyeing. And uh, it was really sad though. I just got the vibe that I knew something was wrong, that he wasn't speaking. And I knew pretty quickly. And if you recall our joke, our inside joke, are you dying? I said that to him all the time for years. He would cough, he'd go, Ugh. and I'd go, are you dying? And he'd go, hell no. And I said, Fred, are you dying? And he would not answer me. He was just looking at me. And I said, Fred, I need to know. I need to know if I have weeks here ahead of me. I need to know what your plan is, you know? And I wasn't aware yet fully that he wasn't gonna talk. Thank you, Andy. And he kept squeezing my hand. He was holding my hand like he always did, but he was, Fred had hands like Tommy. He had huge hands and they were really strong. He played the piano for 90 years, okay? So he was squeezing my hand. And I said, are you dying? And he squeezed it and he wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't do anything. And I just started bawling. And I said, Fred, are you dying? And he went, and it was so sad. Again, I think reliving this and talking about it is very therapeutic for me because you guys know how I feel about, I don't want to call it abandonment, but that's what I mean. People leaving me is very hard for me. And that's why I get so scared that Tommy's going to leave and people that I love are going to leave me. And that's why it's probably the highest on my list when we were talking earlier with Tommy about what's your biggest um, deal breaker. And he said cheating and they're all of you said cheating. And I said, cheating isn't mine. I would rather be cheated on than a man threatened to leave me or I don't like that. The threat of loss really freaks me out. And um, he was at hospice at home, Kim. And I know Fred never left me, but all those years I said, are you dying? And he'd go, hell no. And the other thing Fred would always say to me is he'd go, kid, I'm going to 110 for you. And so when I said, are you dying? And he did that, I thought, oh my God, it really hit me. And I thought, I'm losing my person and I am not ready for this. I finally found somebody. After years of not having somebody, I finally found my somebody. And he was just my best friend. Fred was my absolute puzzle piece. He was the missing piece. And I just wasn't ready. I did not expect him to die that soon. And I just wasn't ready to lose that. And I hated having to accept that and come to grips. Um, Elsie, we were together for a few years. We were only married for six months. But I just remember, it's just interesting to talk about it now. I know I've talked about this before, but to talk about it now, knowing just the time difference of all of this happening and five years ago, but I just remember all the feelings I was feeling and the emotions that were running through my head of just, it's like losing, uh, for me, I don't want to equate this for other people, but I also take it very seriously losing a pet and watching that pet go through, you know, or putting the animal down, God forbid, we've all probably been through that, most of us. It's that choiceless feeling. It's that helpless, I have to do this and I really don't want to do it. And you don't have a choice and you have to just accept it. And when he said yes, that he was dying again, he was my pure strength. And Fred was also my protection. And I had finally found that. And I finally got to be myself. 
And I always say Fred introduced me to myself being in Scientology. I, he was my first, Fred was the first, I just realized that Fred was the first relationship that I had had, marriage that I had had outside of, of being a Scientologist. He, he was not a Scientologist. He had nothing to do with it. And so I would say he's the first person I clung to that was safe. He was not a Scientologist. He wasn't going to fucking report me for anything. I knew I was under his wing and, and he protected me and I wasn't going anywhere. And, um, so when he said yes, that he was dying, I thought, oh my God, I'm losing, I'm going to lose this. Now, weeks before that, months before that, Fred always prefaced, he knew that he was going to die, obviously way before me. We knew this. And I think he would, in his own way, try to prepare me. Every once in a while, he'd say, now, sweetheart, when God pulls my, ma my name out of a hat, he'd go, just call up this funeral home. You know, they know what to do. And I would go, Fred, and I'd immediately turn, just burst into tears. And I would go, don't, 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 don't. I don't want to have this conversation. I don't want to do it. And he'd go, I know, but it's coming. And it's going to happen at some point. And oh my God, it was the hardest thing whenever he would do that to me. And he would do that a couple times a year. I think it was his way of just going, we are best friends, but I am going to die before you, way before you. And I would just go, please, Fred, don't leave. <laughs> don't even think about leaving. Don't talk about leaving. You know, we can, we can keep going. Like we're going to beat them. We're going to beat the numbers. You're going to live to 110 because you can't leave. And then he would say, but I'm never going to leave. And he would say things like, he would say a lot. He'd wink at me and he'd go, I'll wait for you. And I wouldn't change a thing because he really prepared me. He, he created such a, um, stability for after he was gone by telling me those things he would he would really repeat himself and going back and thinking about it now he did exactly what I needed he knew me he knew the language I spoke and he knew this is I need to say these things so that they will be burned into her mind for when I'm not here to tell her so he would say things like I'll always be there I'm not going anywhere I'll wait for you. He would say those things. And I think that's why the last words were, nobody's ever going to love you as much as I do. Like, it's like he knew what would really get through to me. And he put them there to where I'll never forget. I'm sorry, Kate. And, um, It was really, uh, I couldn't, couldn't have asked for a better gift as much as it hurt to lose Fred. I wouldn't have changed a thing. I mean, the day I got to spend with him, he laid in that hospital bed and I just curled up next to him and I lit, Fred was bald and I was just rubbing his head and his face the whole time. And I was just talking. He was awake. He was wide awake. He would smile at me. He'd wink at me, but he never spoke. And I would just look at him and I would say, you know, I love you so much. I did not know he was going to die that day. I thought, I, I'm familiar with hospice. I thought we had some time. Um, thank you, GeoPlanet Jane. Um, we did not have that time. But I wouldn't change a thing. And uh, I kind of want to play this video for you guys. It made me think of it. Most of you have probably seen it, but I've only played it once. So I had a, in my living room, a camera and I had it on Fred. Fred pretty much hung out in the living room while I was at work all day because he would do what old people do. He watched Wheel of Fortune and <laughs> all those things and let's make a deal, whatever. And he'd sit there and drink his coffee and I'd go to work and I'd come home and it was so cute. I'd come home every day. It, what, I'd leave for work and he'd go, Hey kid. And I would go kiss him goodbye and he'd go, I'm rooting for you. Or he would say, I'm on your side. And 
I still hear him say those things to me. And I just, that is the most powerful message because nobody had ever rooted for me. And for whatever reason, that just really made an impact on me. He did it all the time. He'd go, I'm rooting for you, kid. And I'd come home from work and he'd go, God, I missed you. Or sometimes I'd come in the door and he'd go, God, you're pretty. And it was just like overwhelming. Take your breath away. It was so amazing. So I had this camera and I purposely um, would have a camera on Fred during the day because if he fell or there was an emergency, I wanted to know, right? So he goes on hospice and dies that night and the camera doesn't keep recording. It doesn't store the stuff, right? Well, Fred dies, hospice leaves. And uh, I couldn't believe that that is such a weird feeling, by the way, anybody who's been through that, you've got people surrounding you all day long. You've got people coming and going. You've got people calling. You've got people checking on you. You've, you know, you're tired. You're out of it. You haven't showered. I was greasy as hell. I wasn't myself. I'm just rubbing my husband's bald head, just massaging him and like absorbing every moment I can telling him everything I want to say. Cause I don't know how much time I have. Right. And it's fucking torture. It's awful. Right. And there's, again, there's no stopping the clock. You cannot wind it back. All you can do is swallow and accept it. So I'm doing everything I can to just push all my energy onto him and just tell him how much I love him. And uh, he dies and they come get his body and you're fucking alone. And that is a weird place to be. I didn't expect it. I didn't think about it. You're covered in people all day long. You're covered in phone calls and Fred dies at nine o'clock on Saturday, the 20th. And by the way, he was a piano player and he died at nine o'clock on a Saturday, which was, I played that song at his funeral, Piano Man, Billy Joel. It was the weirdest feeling to sit there alone with Fred's dead body waiting on them to pick it up. And once they picked it up, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what to do. It's the, it's quiet. Yeah. You're alone. And it's the most alone I had ever felt. I was like, Oh my God, he's gone. Everybody's gone. And I remember I, I, um, texted Chris Wharton and OT eight. Yeah. I was a Scientologist, keep in mind. And I text OT8 Chris Wharton, and he knows Fred. He had met Fred because he was a chiropractor, and I took Fred to, to get adjusted. And I said, where is he? He just died. I want to know where he is. Is everything okay? I wonder if I still have. I don't think I do. Let me look. I do. I don't. Damn, I don't have them. So I text this uh, OT8. And guys, I got to be honest, it helped. It was helpful. He, he said, <laughs> I don't know. It really got to me what he said. I said, I'm really freaking out. Fred just died. I wasn't ready. And I'm alone and I'm trying to cling to whatever I can right now. Can you locate him? And he writes me back and he said, let me take a look. He said, oftentimes when a person drops their body, they go to where they were born or like they go to like a familiar place of where they grew up. And that may be where Fred is. And I said, can you just locate him please? It would help me to center myself and know that he's okay. Oh, man. I want to believe this to be true, what he said to me, and I choose to believe it. He writes me back and he goes, he's right there. He said, he's right there. And he's really worried about you. 
he said, he's just focused on you. And he said, and you're just as worried about him. But he said, he's right there. And he, was, he said, he's wide awake. And he said, he is right next to you. He's right with you. He's not going anywhere. And I thought, well, that's Fred. <laughs> because Fred never left me. Even to go be with his friends of 50 fucking years, I could not get that man to leave me. I would say, go be with your friends, honey. They're doing a lunch or whatever. And he'd go, nope, I'd rather be with you. And that man held my hand in his sleep. When he drove, he held my hand. He never let go of me. I mean, he just really, and anybody, it's funny. I ran into one of his old friends recently that's alive. And she goes, woo wee. She said, that guy, every time I saw him, he was hanging on to you. She goes, once you two met, he never let go of you. Everywhere I saw you guys, he was hanging on to you. And I said, yeah, we were best friends. I mean, it was very real. But that's what Chris said. Chris Wharton. And I choose to believe that. He said, he's right there and he's not going anywhere. He said, he's just really, really worried about you. And he said, and you guys are each worrying about each other. He said, you guys are just both focused on each other. And I said, yeah, I am. And he said, he's not going anywhere. So he said, he wants me to make that clear to you. He said, he told me to let you know that he's not leaving. And I said, okay. I said, if he chooses to leave, I said, can you let me know? Because I don't, I don't want him to go, but I don't want to make him stay, you know, if he wants to move on. And he said, um, he said, he's, he's not going anywhere, Reese. He said, I, I really kind of, he said something like, I haven't seen such strength like in, in a decision. He said, that man is not leaving your side. And I said, okay. And I felt so much better, but I still felt very alone and freaked. Guys, it is a weird thing. That was the weirdest part really was once they carted his body out, everybody was gone. It was like midnight. And I was like, what do I do? This is my home where I've been sleeping with my husband every night. He just died. Huxley wasn't there, of course. He was with Doug. And that is a weird, weird time stops. It was just a weird. So I called, of all people, my ex-husband, Michael. It was like midnight. He's got a girlfriend. I was like, Fred just died and I'm really alone. And I was like, can you please just come and sit with me? And he was like, I don't, uh, I don't know. And I was like, please, can you just ask her if you can come sit with me for like an hour? I'm just, I don't know who else to call. I was like, I don't have any friends. So he did. He came over and it was weird. He didn't have much to say, but it was nice to just sit with somebody. He sat with me. And the point is that to this is I want to play this video because so the next day I remembered the camera. And I was like, oh my God, this camera, the camera, the camera. And I was like, I wonder if I can pull the video. Well, when Fred died, I had a friend there that was a nurse and she was helping me. And I met her in senior living. She helped dose his medications all day. So I didn't have to do it. So I could just lay with him in the bed and massage his head and talk to him. And she was the one who stood there and told me he was dying. It was nine o'clock and his heart was winding down. And, um, I got to say my goodbyes to Fred. I said everything I wanted to say to him. And I got it on video and I was able to keep this video. And as sad as it is, it's a beautiful video of a person leaving, leaving their body. And I got to be with him and it was a gift and I wouldn't change a thing, but I shared it with you guys not that long ago for the first time. I've never shared it with anybody before. And I felt good enough and ready to do it. I wanted to do it. It wasn't a thing where like, Reese, don't do it. You know, I wanted to, and I chose to, and I, I wanted to play it for you guys tonight. If you're okay with that. I think it's like a minute long guys. It's, it's nothing crazy, but it's, 
it's just, a, it's a beautiful thing. And I hope you can hear what I say to him. Um, thank you, Lisa. It's just, it's kind of a, um, it's a good, when you hear what I say to him, he would have said the same thing to me, by the way, if I were in that bed dying, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's the language of true love. I'm saying goodbye to my husband in his last moments. And it's just, I'm so glad I captured it. And it's not just a memory and I can actually hear it because it's so true what I tell him. Anyway, is it okay with you guys if I play it? I would like to play it. I, it just means a lot to me and uh, I just want to. Okay, let me see if I can remember how to do it. Here it is, okay. Yeah, yeah, his heart stopped beating. Oh my God. Okay. Seven three three one. Seven three three one. Seven three three one. Okay. You did well. H e l m e r. You did very well. W h e l a. It's W a l m e r. I love you. I-N-G or just Don't Walmart. Forget. Okay. Walmart Street. Over on Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye. <laughs> I love you so much, friend. I'm going to miss you so much. I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, um, it's sad, it's emotional. But I'm really glad I have that video. Um, I'm sorry, guys, I just really wanted to share it. It's, it's, it's so meaningful to me. It's, uh, Thanks, Shelly. I still feel that way about Fred and I still think Fred is with me. I believe that very much. I think that um, Fred once told me I will walk streets of gold. He said, you're gonna do big things, kid. He was always a cheerleader for me. He was always telling me like what a great person I am and such a good heart. And I truly believe this is year five. I think he couldn't have done it all at once. I don't have a relationship with God. I'm not saying there isn't a God. I feel cheated that I didn't get a relationship with, with God. And I'm jealous of people who have a relationship with God. I don't know what faith is, but I do believe, I, I pray to Fred and I think that I have a relationship with God through Fred. And Um, I know Fred was a big believer in God and I, I just, I think there's something to that, but I believe that Fred is doing, um, he's slowly making things happen. I don't think he could have done it all at once, but I think the Aaron thing accidentally outing me, I think the channel, I think all my friendships and my, my relationships I've made with you guys. 
I think all of that is because of Fred. I think it's all these gifts that he keeps giving that he told me he was going to do. He said, I'm not going anywhere. And I, I think that. And so there's just so much relief there. That's why I'm really, truly not afraid to die. I don't want to die anytime soon, but if I did, I know, I can't tell you how many times he said, I'll see you on the other side. And I think he will. I, I, I think there's something to that. I don't know what happens, but I think that that's possible and I can't wait. I think there's something to that. I don't think people actually ever go away. And yeah, I think he's working on everything, Jazzy girl. Thank you, Layla. Um, thanks, Pat Jonas. I just, that is faith. Okay. I have a hard time with faith. Hey, Trinity. I have a hard time with the, the definition of faith. I don't really know what it means. I, I get jealous when people talk about it. Not at, of the person. I'm not mad at the person. I get jealous at the idea of it because it sounds like such a wonderful thing when people have faith in their abilities, when people have faith in where they're going, when they have that kind of confidence, I just think, man, I wish I had that. I wish I knew what you know. but I feel more clear about it these days. Um, and I just know, I just hear him all. I hear Fred's voice all the time still going, Hey kid, I'm on your side. I'm rooting for you. I don't think that goes away. And so yes, faith is taking a step when you cannot see the next step. Kila, thank you for that. That's true. That's right. I have it through Fred. Yes, Trinity. Thank you. I definitely have faith in that. I just, you know, people have so much faith in life and a relationship typically with God. And I, I admire that. I think it's a beautiful thing. And who the hell am I to say, you know, there isn't one or all of that just because I came from a place that told me there wasn't one. I don't know if there's a God or not. I'd like to believe there is, but I, I don't know that. But I know Fred's beautiful words. And Fred would pray often before he would eat. He went to church and he made God sound like such a likable character to me. Not scary, not you do this or you go to hell. You know, Fred would just say to me, you know, when I, when I die, he would say, when God pulls my name out of a hat, I'm going to go home to God's house. And it's that easy kid. I mean, he just made it seem really like, you know, it's not scary. It's not, uh, he, he, you know, when he died and I had the funeral, what do they call that? When the guy is coming, Hey, Casey cat. Thank you. That's awesome. Casey cat. Thank you. The guy that comes and speaks at his funeral. I can't think of the name of what that guy is. It wasn't like a pastor or anything. It was like some guy. And he came to my house and he asked me to describe Fred. And, uh, he said, what is a word you would use to describe Fred? And I took a second to think about it. And I thought, a word. And I thought, thank you, Geoplanet Jane. I thought, fearless, fearless, 100%. Yeah, Lori, probably 100% fearless. He has so many of the same qualities as Tommy. I don't know that I would, <laughs> I don't know that I would have called Fred Crimmy but he was a little crimmy in a lot of ways. I don't know that I would call it crimmy, but <laughs> he was a badass and he was fearless physically, even at his effing age. Yeah. West coast, fancy Nancy. Fred prayed for me. Absolutely. He was just a pure badass. I, it did not matter. That guy was so strong. When my stepdad would come to town, he would take his wedding ring off before he would shake hands with Fred because he would crush his hand. Fred was so strong physically. It was insane. And so Fred would say like, Fred would talk about like beating somebody's ass. Like he was just so like fearless. And I'm not saying he would have 
knocked people down. Right. But like, he was fearless as far as I don't care that I'm 95. I don't care. Like that reminds me a lot of Tommy. Like we're, we're just getting this done. We're not going to talk about obstacles. I'm getting it the fuck done. And that's how Fred was too. Just, just the, there, there, there are no stops here. We're just doing it. Very masculine. Oh my God, Lori, a man's man for sure. For sure. And he just took control. Thank you, Avalon. He just took control of the situation every time. And another thing about him taking Fredulous, that's so cute, Kim is blue. Another thing that Fred would never allow me to do was kick my own ass, ever. If I even tried to say like, but I'm fat or I'm ugly or I'm this, he was just like, nope, mm -mm. no. No way, kid. Like he was just like, no. And and I didn't honestly do it much around him because he just made me feel so special all the time. I didn't really want to call myself fat around Fred. I didn't feel that way around him. I mean, that's what I mean. Yeah, witness, he would literally, we, I mean, we would watch TV and it, he would just hold my hand and he'd squeeze it real hard sometimes. And I'd look over at him because I assumed that he was going to want to tell me something. So I'd look at him and he'd go, God, you're pretty. And I just, that was one of the reasons I didn't want to tear myself down. Cause I was like, I don't really need to, it's not forced. He's just doing this. It was so relaxed and just organic. Just that, you know, he'd squeeze my hand sometimes and I'd look at him and he'd go, I'm rooting for you, kid. I mean, it was just, it was so relaxed. I just, there was no reason for me to doubt him. There was no reason for me to go, no, you're not. And so that's why Lori Lee, he was gold. Um, Skyrider, complete safety. I never felt more safe. He made me feel very safe. And so when he said yes, that he was dying, all those feelings came crashing in on me of, I am losing my person. But then, you know, here we are five years tomorrow, I never lost Fred. I never lost him. I've never felt like he was gone. And I would say it's been five years tomorrow. I'd say three times a year. I have a really, I love you, Kat. I was thinking about you this, this morning. I saw a picture of you on my Facebook from when we met in Seattle and it made me think of you. Um, I would say about three times a year, he comes to visit me in, in a very clear manner. I mean, I talk to him all the time, but I will have a really nice dream of him in his tuxedo, like our wedding day. And he will just pop in. And I know it's him because it's not me. It's just not me. I can't describe it other than that. It's not my thoughts. It's not me. And he'll do that sometimes when I'm awake. I'll hear his voice. And I'm like that. It's almost like a person coming into the room talking. You know, it's not you because there's a person there talking, right? It's the same thing. This will happen to me sometimes. I have been in this office and I will seriously hear him go, God, you're pretty. Like I will hear it. And I'm like, I'm not crazy. And that wasn't me. Like I just hear him, but he'll do that in the form of a dream. Yes, Shelly. And he will show up in his tux and he looks so good in his tux. And I hear his raspy, gravelly voice. And he goes, hi, sweetheart. Because that's what he always called me. Honey and sweetheart. Sometimes he called me peaches too, which I thought was really cute. But he would go, hi, sweetheart. He had a real big, he was real big, loud voice. And that's it. And then he'll pop back out. And every time I have that dream, I wake up so calm in the morning. And I look outside from my bed and I go, Thank you, Fred. Thank you for that. Thank you for coming to see me. Thank you for letting me see you, for visiting me. I got to hear you. I always tell him thank you for that. And then I tell him, don't be a stranger so much. Do that more than three times a year. I'd really like to see you. But he shows and you know when he wants to, and that's okay. And I know that he's always around. I feel like I'm dragging this out. But it helps to talk about it. Tomorrow is going to be kind of a tough day for me. 
Yeah, Lisa. I love that Jamie Palmer. That's neat. Oh, Suzanne, I like that. Me too, Odetta. Guys, what we had was so beautiful. And somebody said earlier, like, even though you guys never physically, like I never had sex with Fred, he was 95 years old. The lovemaking happened all the time. I mean, he just loved the shit out of me. And he still does. I totally feel that. Brittany, I haven't had faith in years, but after my last unaliving attempt, I found a cat. It changed my life. I'm still here. I'm so glad. Your story is so inspiring. I think the universe sends us who or what we need to survive. Brittany, I'm really glad that you're still here, babe. And I love you. And we all do, by the way. We really love you, Brittany. Thank you for your super chat. I think that Fred would really get a kick out of the fact that we are all chatting about him and what a great guy he was. Please focus on his love for you. It will help you miss Fred less. Thank you, Layla. You're right, too. Yes, absolutely, Margie Barr. Hey, Alana. You have to live your life, Reese. Fred would want you to be happy. Do what you need to do, babe. Be free. Absolutely. I think, well, Shelly, I think Fred is guiding me with that. I think Fred is absolutely guiding me um, with that decision because I am making that decision. You want to know something really weird? Last year, this time last year, uh, on the day Fred died, guys, this was so weird. This is so weird. On the day Fred died last year, I was on the couch. I think I was on my computer. I was home alone. And I know this happens, by the way. Okay. I know this happens. It's spring, but it was still very weird. Okay. The day Fred died, April 20th last year, I hear my front door. I hear this loud, loud noise. I thought the glass broke and I go look and I took this picture. It looked exactly like this. This is my front door rug. Look at that. And it's a cardinal. And it was so sad. I was really sad about it. And I thought, God, that's weird. Because cardinals are supposed to be, um, you know, Yeah. Yeah. It was strange. Um, and sad. So sad. You guys know, I love animals. It was so, yeah, Brian, it was really depressing. Actually. I cried quite a bit. Yes. Joe virus Cardinals are supposed to be a family member, like showing up as a, as a remembering. Yeah. It was odd. It's never happened again. But I just thought that is so, and the way it's laying, it just made me so sad. It was so sad. And I don't know. I don't know if it meant anything, but strange, right? Jamie Palmer, wow. Anne says, tomorrow I think you should kiss both of your tattoos on your arms and say, thanks, Fred. I'm going to start believing your words this year. And that's a good idea. And I'll do that. And I need to do that. And I think uh, my good friend Tommy is a lot like Freddie. Sh he shows a lot of the same qualities, especially when it comes to strength and protection. Tommy is like the definite. If, if somebody said, give me a word, I would say fearless too with Tommy. A lot of strength and a lot of pr protection. That's probably why I'm so attracted to him just in life. Um, I know that was the sad thing. And that's how it was laying. It's not like I touched that bird. That's exactly what happened and how it was laying. That bird looks like an angel with, with its wings spread. I'm sad that it had to die though. And I hope it died immediately. I think it did, but it was so odd that that happened on the day Fred died. 
but um, he is my butch, laughs me. Yeah. Yeah, the bird looks like an angel. Um, but I feel very grateful. I do feel so many, like I said, characteristics and qualities that come from Tommy that Fred had. And I don't think I don't notice. I don't think I'm not grateful for that. I don't take it for granted. I love that, Blake. My mother always taught me that red cardinals and white irises were gentle reminders from God that our loved ones are not gone, but simply close to him in heaven. That's beautiful. I love that. Kathleen, I was with Fred for several years, but um, sadly, we were only married for six months and three days. Tampa A girl, that's a good point. This is what matters in life. I say that all the time. You cannot put a price on this. It is such a gift to be with someone as they die. I, I always worried I was going to come home and Fred was going to be bled out on the floor or I was going to wake up next to him and he died or he was going to have some painful death and like suffer. And, you know, I was going to have to watch that, which I did. Hospice is not a beautiful thing. You know, you go through the death rattle and they go through all these stages of death that day, hours before they die. And it's really hard to watch. But I always thought, how is this going to end for me? How is this going to end for him? Am I going to have to watch my best friend? You know, like I said, I was always fearful because Fred was a busy body. He was a busy bee. He would sweep. He would shovel the snow. He would, he was always doing stuff. And I was like, ah, like, no, I would get mad at him for it. I was like, Fred, don't, I'll do it. You know, don't carry that. I'll do it. And he'd go, damn it, woman. He'd go, I'm not a vegetable, damn it. And I was like, I know you're not, but I also am trying to keep you alive. Like, I don't want you to trip and fall. I don't want you to get hurt. And, you know, just silly me. I mean, he was always, he always called me mother hen, but it was a beautiful exit. And I wouldn't change a thing. I would not change a thing. It was, uh, we got to say everything we wanted to say to each other. And uh, love you, Brianna Miller. Yeah. Keela, Reese, you gave Fred the greatest love on, his, on this earth. He took a step while holding the hands of those he saw standing over you. Thank you, Keela. And Fred was a real man. Oh man, Shelly, real as it comes. He was super, I don't know if it, you would say alpha. Fred was just very uh, confident in who he was. He was never rude to anybody. He was never Billy badass. He wasn't like bulldozing his way through people because he was a tough guy. He never ever, he treated everybody with kindness. But you knew you couldn't fuck around with Fred at the same time. There was no fuck. He, you fucked around. You were going to find out with Fred. It was very like, well, you know, it's just kind of an understanding. It just came off of him, but he was never rude, never rude, never unkind. It was just kind of an unspoken thing. I think it's just when you have a real man, he was a true gentleman too. There was never a door that wasn't held by Fred for me to go through. I mean, super masculine, but you don't have to come off as rude or aggressive to be a man like that. Quite the opposite. In fact, he was very kind and just very much a gentleman, but you knew he meant business at the same time. Yeah. You knew he meant business and you didn't really want to cross that or find out. And it was sexy. It was such a turn on. And I know we had a huge age gap and I know that's weird for a lot of people, but I truly did not see that. And he didn't see it either. We just saw each other. He was, we just really, really loved each other. Look at this giant. Look at that tummy kid. Wow, girl. It's a lot. I think you might've gained some, but I, I don't want to be harsh. Um, there's a lot there. It's a lot. It's kind of a lot. Um, guys, I really appreciate you listening. I know. All right. Why don't you get in your chair? Okay. So sorry. Um, okay. Let's kid, kid. All right. Let's just sit here for a minute and just, let's just think about our thoughts. Oh, she's purring away. All right. Uh, what was Fred's occupation? He was, a aerodynamic engineer. He went to medical school 
and decided he didn't want to be a doctor. Fred was super sharp. Dude was so intelligent. Um, uh, he was an aerodynamic engineer. That's what he did. Super smart. Uh, I plan to have a memorial tattoo with his name and his own handwriting. What do you think? Yes. Well, I'm wearing my Fred bracelet right there. But um, Fred signed a lot of his cards this. That's his handwriting. Your number one admirer, Fred. So I absolutely, Ewa, think you should do that. I've got all kinds of tattoos in memory of Fred. And it just makes me feel closer to him to see his name uh, on me. It just makes me feel good. It, it means so much to me. I don't regret those tattoos at all. Soulmates don't see age gaps. Yeah, witness. Yeah, dude was so smart. Fred was so damn smart. So intelligent. Um, but you guys, this meant a lot that you listened to me and you were here with me. And that's just kind of all I needed tonight. I won't do it again tomorrow, even though tomorrow's the day. Um, I love that, SM. I know, Geoplanet Jane. Uh, Reese, when you first told the story about your love story with Fred, you changed my mind about huge age gaps in love. Huge hugs and love to you. SMSV, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Uh, Kid is a... She's, yeah, I do feel better, Shelly. Guys, really, truly, this is this is what I mean. This is why this channel means so much to me. Um, oh, man. Uh, thank you, Jan. It just means so much. You should, Jamie Palmer. Lizar, how have the news of your change been received? Actually, better than I thought. Um, I'm just concerned going forward. There's just going to be a lot of changes, guys, happening in my life going forward. It's going to be a lot. And uh, kind of worried about it, to be honest with you. Looking forward to the changes, looking forward to the growth, but worried about it. I love that. Thank you, Jamie Palmer. Yeah, it's quite the potato. It's a big potato, isn't it? That's okay. We don't judge this. She's all right. Yeah, Fred had a whole month dedicated him. Pat Campbell, I hope you're doing well with your new grandbaby. Thank you, witness. So, Shelly, I know I can do it. Hey, Ty Mark. Um, but you guys, really, truly, I had to talk this out. Thank you, Wine, a little bit more. Uh, Amber Vanass, um, there's a possibility to that, but I'm having um, trouble with the financial side of that because it's going to be a real, it's not something I'm even really willing to think about right now. I mean, I have to, yes. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I have to figure that out. Yes, she is the sweetest sweet potato. That's true, Pierre. I like that. Zelda, okay, kid, damn girl. Uh, Reese, this has helped me unblock feelings of some of my losses. We all comfort each other. Zelda, I love that. Guys, I don't know about you. I don't know how you process things, but it is so helpful for me to talk about it. It helps to talk about it. Thank you, Amber. It helps a lot. Um, so I appreciate you listening. There were a lot of people in here. Um, thanks, Witness. Witness, you're so nice. Thank you. There were a lot of people in here. I appreciate you guys supporting me. I appreciate you supporting me and Tommy. Um, your super chats, your memberships, all that stuff really helps me right now. I can't really go into detail about what's coming, but know that that is super supportive and helpful, especially right now. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just, just listening to me and, and letting me go through the motions and guys, you never know what somebody's going through. Like tomorrow is the five year that could be anybody. And I think it helps to put things into perspective that way and go, maybe that person was rude or snippy. 
you know, there's people going through losses, there's people going through chemo, there's people going through, and I know you know that, right? I'm not talking down to you in a way like everybody be nice. You don't know what someone's going through, but people really are going through it. And I will be okay because I have you guys. But Mary, I'm so glad you're out of the hospital. That's great. Ty Mark, I'm so sorry. Wow, that's quite a loss, Ty Mark. I'm really sorry. It's just something to keep in mind if somebody is snippy with you or whatever. Um, people are going through losses and sicknesses and their own stuff. And uh, lots of big changes too. And I'm going to be doing that as well. Lots of changes ahead. Thank you, Jazzy girl. I will be okay. I know I'm going to be okay. If I got through what I got through, going forward has to be easier. And I have you guys. So there's really nothing better, to be honest. There's nothing better. Um, Sarah. Yes, Anne, for sure. Belief and faith differ. Many believe in God, but do not live in faith. Faith is trust in something. It is peace, something that glows in you and how you experience life. You clearly have a deep faith. Thank you for that, Amber. That's really nice of you. Thank you, Liz. Mark, I'm so sorry. Mark Hardman. I love that, Sarah Browett. I can see that, and I can see why you would say that. I actually see it a little differently now that you put it that way. Thank you, babe. That's really, it's important. I needed to see that. Thank you for your super chat. I would have cried to see the bird. I wonder how you ended up with your current husband, maybe rushed into it because lonely. Um, I believe that it needed to take place. Um, it got me here. It needed to happen. And you know what, guys? It's not the worst thing. It's part of life. He's not a bad person. He's totally on board with what's going on. And he's being a friend through this. And um, uh, third eye open next weekend, just next weekend. Uh, but Friday is the day I will be able to meet with everyone. Yeah, Shelly, Jeff has a purpose too. And he's not a bad person. I've just experienced a lot of growth and he knows that. And, um, it's just part of the experience. That's how I'm looking at it. There's no regret there. It's part of the experience and I had to go through it. Me too, Shelly. Me too. Big time. Me too. He deserves that. I love you, Mark Hardman. Yes, Anne, absolutely. Absolutely, guys. It's scary, though, what's to come. I mean, change is always kind of a, especially if it's going to be like a physical change, you know, it's scary, it's expensive, it's, uh, it's overwhelming, <laughs> to be honest. But absolutely laughs me. I love that. Absolutely. And you know the way I like to look at that laughs me to top that off? We just never, I realized something about he and I. We never spoke each other's languages. He never spoke my language. Now we're good friends and he's a great person and I love him. But just some of the things that I've witnessed and seen, I see that Possibly, Layla. There's a possibility. Just the things that I've witnessed and seen, though. Thank you, Brian Lucas. I love you. Hey, Gretchen. Wish you would have been here the whole time, Gretchen. It was a good one. Love you, girl. Yeah, Shelly. But I mean, more importantly, it's just that. It's that simple. We have a hard time going through the motions of, of learning each other's language. And it honestly should not take that much effort. 
And I've learned that the hard way. It should not take that much effort to make something work, to force something to work. If it takes that much effort, it really isn't probably right. Yeah, totally, GeoPlanet Jane. Absolutely. Absolutely, Brianna. Absolutely, Liz R. Yeah, yeah. Janie, I'm glad you didn't either. Layla, it was very effortless with Fred. Thank you, Ty Mark. Me too. Love you, Miss Sunrise Dawn. Gotta speak the language, Kim is blue. Very, very uh, good. Positive life. Very good things there. That's right, Cricket. Absolutely. Jamie Polymer, you got it. Yeah, and Cherish High Vibes. Compatibility is very important. And it's not something that can be forced. It just isn't. And I'm finding that to be very true. And just because two people may not be compatible as um, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, doesn't mean they can't be adults and be friends and do things in a, in a, in a respectful way. It has to be that way, guys. Has to be. If it doesn't feel right, it's never going to be right. Yeah. Yarn prepper, I'm so glad. Okay, Gretchen. Yeah, guys. And, and I'm not making some big announcement here. I'm just telling you that what I've been telling you since I started this channel, changes are being made. I'm just growing. Uh, who's in the chair? The cat. She just jumped into it and it swung. Um, I'm not saying anything shocking here. I'm just telling you guys that I'm growing and uh, it's a good thing. It's a, it feels good. It feels healthy, feels right. And uh, I appreciate your support in that because you guys mean everything to me. My channel means everything to me. And uh, I want to keep, keep growing. I want my channel to keep growing. I want to continue to make friends. You're welcome, Pierre. <laughs> um, yeah, Ali Oop, it's the cat. She, she just jumped off the desk to the chair and the chair spun. Thank you, Zelda. Yeah, Shelly, it'll be good. Sarah, definitely blossoming. Um, it's scary. And I want to keep you guys with me through the whole process and keep you close. And um, I hope that you stay with me. I hope that this channel grows and that we can have more people like us. Um, thank you, Jazzy girl. I worry because I've lost 200 subs in the last couple of weeks, but I'm told it's YouTube. I just, you guys know, that's my biggest fear is losing you guys. And, you know, someone, God forbid something happening, like someone starting a rumor or trying to smear me or just flat out losing you. Cause I say something I shouldn't have said and people leave me. That's like weird, irrational fears that I have all the time. I just worry about it all the time. Thank you, Pat Kimbrell. Thank you, Gretchen. I know Catherine it laughs me. I know. I just get weird and clingy with you guys and losing 200 subs doesn't help. I really get sad about it. If you don't mind, actually, while you're here, check to make sure you're subscribed because I think people are getting unsubscribed. Thank you, V. McWilliams. Amber, thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Uh, Cinderella's last slipper. I know. Lori Lee, definitely. Anita Card. Um, I need a card uh, very soon. It's just kind of a, I'm in a holding pattern right now, probably more financially than anything. Um, it's just, it's, it's a big, you guys know, big changes cost and you got to plan and prepare. And so that's all I'm doing. I'm just getting there little by little. Geoplanet Jane, that's so nice of you to say. Thank you guys. Thanks for checking, by the way. Thank you, Pierre. I believe that too, Shelly Kelly, a hundred percent. I believe that it's, I'm sure witness, it's probably a YouTube thing, but it's odd. Um, it's odd. 
you know, this channel has been consistently growing and it is just backpedaling. Now I've been told by other uh, content creators that it's happening right now. That's happening. I think it's weird. Um, but I do think for all of you that want to support me and be here with me and through this and join in, subscribe. If you don't want to be, don't be, but just make sure you are, if you want to be, that's all. Um, that's so cute. Oh, is the lifeboat? Oh, Spanx just started. Okay. I'm going to hop off so he can be on his thing. And we've been on long enough anyway, but, um, Kiki and the two cats, I love you too. You guys, I really love you. And I hope that gets across. I hope you know it. I really care about you guys. I feel so safe sharing the story I shared tonight, sharing the video I shared tonight, being able to cry with you guys. That means everything to me, it means more to me than any money and anything else. Cause I'm lifted by you guys and you just can't buy that. It means so much. Alana, I love you too, girl. Finances will definitely work out Zelda. Yes, they will. There's always a way. And I'm sure Fred will help with that too. Thank you, Wine, a little bit more. Thank you, guys. It means the world to me. Yeah. Uh, I will be on tomorrow. I am going to go celebrate Fred and go to our favorite restaurant and have a little date and just sit and pretend he's sitting across from me and talk to him and get some mastacholi. You know, that always, uh, carbs always help too. I don't know if you knew. Um, Thank you, Leslie girl. You guys, I really, uh, I hope you don't too, Cricket. Losing 200 subs is sad. It makes me sad because I don't think they wanted to go. I think YouTube did it. It bothers me. Love yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shelly, this is the best group, best chat ever. Order extra tomorrow. Don't worry. I probably will. My, my favorite thing there is their side salads. They put like garbanzo beans and pimentos and they put a lot in there. It's a good Italian salad. Uh, Patricia M. Thank you. Kiki. I know. I love you guys. Yes. Carbs equals comfort for sure. Cricket. Okay. You were unsubscribed without knowing. Thank you for checking. Layla. I'm sorry I made you guys cry, but it was a good cry. I mean, it's a special, it was just a special story and I don't talk about it all the time. I try not to cause it is sad, but I had to, and I feel better. And I just, you guys stuck it out with me. And I appreciate that so much. Love you wine a little bit more. Cassie Mosier. Thank you so much for saying that. Emily Blythe. I love you, girl. Um, Keela, you know, I love you. And thank you for the gifted memberships, Keela. Kat ACDC, you and uncle Dave. I love you guys. Great words of wisdom, but I don't. Um, if I did live, if I did, my life would be better. <laughs> love you, Kat. You're just, you just are so lovable. I'm just happy you're here. Oh, dad, I love you, girl. Uh, thank you, Abigail. Thank you. Yeah, Zelda, I agree. To Fred, guys, to Fred. Tony Hooter, I will open your package, by the way. I do have it, and I love you. Bye, Boris. Sarah Browett, thank you for your super chats tonight and your beautiful wisdom. Witness, you as well. You were good tonight. Thank you for that. Mods, always thank you. Yeah, guys, this was huge and I appreciate you being here. You have no idea what it means to me that this many people were here with me tonight. I know, Layla, you are. All right, guys, speaking of Fred, here he comes. He's going to wink at you all and uh, definitely to Fred. Thank you for being here and I will be back tomorrow. Joe Virus, I really love you and, Ra and Rain Virus, you know that. Orion, Gemini, definitely. I was happy that you guys were here to celebrate this with me. All right. Everybody sleep well. I'm going to go to bed and uh, here comes Fred. Good night, guys. Love you.